What up, YouTube? It's your boy. It's Carter TV, and I'm back with the season finale, chapter 10, Secrets in the Streets, man. Chapter 10. I know this is what y'all been waiting for for some of the fans out there, but this is where we at, and this is where we here. Chapter 10. P.S. I'm starting chat. I'm starting season two next Monday, September 6th. Uh, season two, episode one will be dropping. Just so y'all know. Um, I'm going to try to be more, more consistent with it. But right now, I'm giving y'all episode, uh, chapter 10, the season finale. The title is, <sighs> it's the end of a new beginning. We start this chapter off with, uh, the detective Johnson in the hospital. Um, he's being visited by the lieutenant and getting a report on what happened uh, at the park. And his partner Peterson is there. And you know, the Lieutenant is just following up on what happened and they're discussing it. And you know, he basically leaves the room for a short brief of time because he gets a phone call. Peterson and Detective Johnson is still in there now. Now they're having words. So Johnson looks at him like, what the fuck was you doing out there? I could have sworn you were shooting on the other side of me. You wasn't shooting for me. At, you wasn't helping me at all. So Peter said, what you mean I wasn't helping you? I was trying to get that kid Charlie off your back. He was like, get him off my back. He saved my life. That kid saved my life. In case you didn't know, he was actually shooting for me. He was like, what's your issue, Peterson? What you got with this kid? And what you got with his father? So Peterson goes, well, speaking of his father, What's the situation on that? He's getting out of jail today. That's the situation. He's getting out of jail today. He's already being released, as we know. So Peterson is like, what? Why didn't you tell me this? What's going on? Like, why are you keeping a lot of things from me? So Detective Johnson, you know, he was hitting the leg, but he's still able to move. It was like an in and out. It went right through his thigh or whatever. So he gets up. He's like, fuck you, man. Fuck you. You've been lying to me this ever since I got on this team, since I became your partner. I found out that you killed your last two partners. I found out you've been working with the guy boss. I found out you've been extorting other little local drug dealers in the, in the neighborhood. I know everything about you now, Peterson. You're done. You're done. Once this report gets out, you're done. Pack your shit up and get the fuck out of here. Because you're finished. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. My partners died in action. Yeah, they died by your gun. Ballistics found out who guns it was. Yeah, it was yours. So stay the fuck away from me. Because you going down and I ain't going down with you. So Detective Johnson walks off. Peterson is in hot water now. The case is coming to a close. King is being released from jail. Peterson is about to go down. He makes a phone call boss king is getting out uh we turn to boss now when he come when you see him getting a phone call boss hangs up the phone immediately and shot right he hangs up immediately shot like what the fuck was going on that kid charlie still alive king getting the fuck out organization talking about kicking me out the fuck is going on now the organization is taking everything upon their own hands now um, boss is getting revoked. He's getting removed from the organization due to the fact that he couldn't handle his business in the streets. So with that being said, boss has to, he has to really take charge and do what he got to do. You feel me? So what he decides to do is start putting people in the streets, right? He goes sees Clarusso, but when he get to go see Clarusso, his uncle was there. His uncle was there. So he's looking around, and he's like, uh, what's Caruso? He said, who are you? Oh, me and him do business together. Oh, boss, right? I heard about you. Uh, yeah, I'm his father. I'm his father. Lulu. So he goes, Lulu, well, how you doing, Mr. Lulu? Nice to meet you. Whatever, right? So he says that to him. He said, uh, you, you, you know my brother Eddie? You know, he was killed a while back, and they say he was your partner. He came. 
Oh yeah, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't know what happened with that. All I know is King killed him and then he got locked up for it. But word is he's getting out today. And you do business with my son, so that means you do business with me now. And the business proposition I got for you is if you still want to continue business, go take out King. And if you don't, I'm coming for you. So he it was like, oh shit. He said, You can't give me no motherfucking ultimatum. I don't work for you. Well technically you do if you copping from my son. So Kalusa shows up. He's looking stuck. He's looking shook like. So he looking at Kalusa. You're not going to say nothing. You're not going to speak up. He was just like stuck. He was like, he can't. He let his uncle get killed. By you fucking. Uh... And he called them black people. He called them that. He was being racist. Black people. He's come. You come to your country. And you try to. You know, run over us because we don't you don't think we know how it works. But we do. We Russians have our own way of doing things. And trust me, we will get the job done. So it's either you kill King or we gonna kill you and King and your whole family. So boss is now stuck, like what the fuck is going on? Like, <sighs> so he was like we still got business. I could bring you in a lot of money, but business has to continue. I'll take care of King, but business gotta still gotta flow. So that's what Clues was like, Dad, he's right. We still gotta make money. Shh. Okay. Okay. You know, I had a young lady, I had a lady come here today and she warned me about you. She, she warned me about you. She said, don't trust you. Now, why would she say something like that? So boss looked like, what lady are you talking about? She said, you're very familiar with her. You guys have a baby together? So he instantly thought, Tony. So why the fuck would she tell you some shit like that? What the fuck? He said, I'm, I could be trusted, man. I'm good. Extra son. He could vouch for me. Yeah. So he, Caruso looked at his dad and shook his head. So, all right, we're going to see how trustworthy you are when you take out your partner. We'll tie the knot then. So he was like, all right, right now, get the fuck out my place and go do what you got to do. Basically shoving boss off. So boss is like, what the fuck is going on? So now we go to Charlie. Charlie is, he's at Victoria's crib. Uh, after the shooting and everything, and you know, from that night, him and Victoria got real close and everything. And Destiny came to the crib, Mo came to the crib. And when they came to the crib, they found Charlie in the crib. They saw him in the crib or whatever. And they were just looking at him like, What the hell is he doing here? Like, so Destiny approached him, like, What the fuck are you doing here? How you go in my way on my girl? And you just show up out of nowhere. You know, she been worried. You know she pregnant with your baby. Like, she's completely going off him. And Mo trying to tame her. Like, yo, chill. Like, chill. So Charlie just looking at her. She's like, you ain't got shit to say for yourself? You a fucking bum? How you just going to abandon her like that? Da -da 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 -da. Going off on him, right? Then Victoria comes out. She's like, Destiny, what are you doing? So she's like, what you mean? What am I doing? Why is he here? We spoke about this already. So Destiny goes, oh, I didn't know. That's because you didn't ask. She said, but girl, you know you got my best interest. You know, I'm just looking out for you. I understand that. But you can't just be going on, especially if you don't know what happened. So Mo shaking her head. I tried to tell her. I tried to tell her. I tried to tell her. She looked at that. Destiny looked at her like, girl, you ain't trying to tell me shit. I said, girl, I tried to hold you back. Hush up. She was like, oh, well, I guess you good in my book, Charlie. Try not to apologize. So talk. So Charlie basically just shrugged it off. Like, I said, uh, babe, I gotta go and do some things today. You gonna be good? She like, yeah, I'm gonna be good. You gonna be all right? And Mo was like, I don't mean to interrupt your little romance thing, but uh, did you hear about the shooting that happened yesterday? She was Charlie. Go, yeah, we was involved. We was there. So Dustin and Mo looked at each other like, 
come again. We was there. Like I said, you gonna be good. She's like, I'm gonna be good. I probably just stay in the house today. If anything and uh, all right, all right. I'm gonna see you later, right? They didn't give her a kiss, and they like, ooh, the two girls laughing, ooh, sucky, sucky now. She was the before you left, like you need some money, or anything, and she was like, no, but he ended up giving her money anyway. He was like, yeah, just in case you want to order, you know, you want your girls or something, get y'all a movie or something. And he leaves. So they both like, what the hell is going on? So Victoria basically tell him, me and Charlie met at the park. While meeting at the park, a detective showed up. And then I saw my dad with a bunch of dudes. And they started shooting in the direction of where me and Charlie was. The detective got hit and Charlie was shooting back. So that's me like, he was shooting back? He was shooting back? He's a shooter? I was like, for real? He don't look like the type to be a shooter. That's when he was like, for real, girl, we thought he was a square. Shit, don't judge a book by his cover. Don't judge a book by his cover. So the girl was like, wow, that's crazy. So what did he say about the baby? What did he say about the baby? He said, whatever decision I made, he was, he was supporting me. So, I still really haven't decided if I really want to keep the baby or get rid of it. So, right now, I'm just going to weigh my options out. So, the mother's going to keep listening. She's listening in. And she's texting boss like, my daughter is pregnant with Charlie's baby. She's texting boss this. And the mother's just listening. And then we And we go to stop. I saw her crew been making a lot of noise in the streets. And to the surprise that it got pushed back to KJ, it was actually going on in the streets. A lot of shit been happening. Their main focus was Charlie. So Storm, uh, Storm was thinking about teaming up with Star and them. Because it was like an all girls click and everything. And shit was starting to hit the fan. So she spoke to Star before, you know, before KJ even knew about it. They spoke or whatever. And, you know, Storm been thinking about it. So Star, uh, Zoe, and Aaliyah was just chilling. And Tony was sitting there, and she gets a phone call from Boss. She just ignores it. He called like four times. She's ignoring it. She, and then Star was like, who's that calling? He was like, that's Boss. Word must have got back to him, so now he's trying to be on my ass. So Star goes like, she ain't that how niggas is. She said, you ain't never lie. So she go, what's the next move? I said, now that we taking over two of the buildings, it's time to take over the rest. It's time to take over the rest. So Star, I'm going to put you with Sting. Y'all going to hit one building. Zoe, Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Well, this is a new face. Star, who was this young lady? Leah. Oh, she's a close friend of mine. Um, a close friend? How come I haven't seen her? Where's Mo? Mo is with her girlfriend right now. Um, you know how that goes. So. But Leah, she's good people. I hope so. We're going to see how good she is. So, Zoe already knew what time it was. She was going to get the test to see how loyal you to and how good she was. So, she basically got instructions to go take over one building. Her and so Now, mind you, Leah never actually held a gun before. She never was a shooter. You know what I'm saying? She could fight, but she wasn't the type to shoot. Being that she's back with Star, she's getting introduced into new things as far as dealing with drugs and guns and, sh and you know, and stuff like that. So Leah was looking at Star like, yo, what, what's going on? She said, you wanted to be a part of my team, right? You wanted us girls to be back to cool again, right? Well, show me, Leah. Go with Zoe. Handle your business. So, Leah's shooken up. She don't know what to do, right? She's asking Zoe. And as she's asking Zoe, Zoe's clipping up the gun. Getting the gun ready. She's putting on her gloves. And she has a mask on the top of her head. Right? And she hands Leah the gun. She said, well, Leah, look at her. Like, what am I going to do with this? 
So I was all looking, I was like, use it, bitch. What the fuck? <laughs> Listen, if you don't prove yourself now, you probably be behind one of these bullets. So I advise you to get used to it. So Leah's like, I never shot nobody before. You shot somebody before, so? She's like, yeah, just the other day. And she said it so casually and calm. Yeah, just the other day. Me, uh, Star, and Mo. She was like, y'all bitches been running around shooting up people? Uh, yeah. What the fuck? How you been thinking? We and then she pulls out a brick of money. How you been thinking we've been getting all this money? So Star, uh, Leah face lit up like, that's a lot of money. So y'all been killing for money? Not when Denzel goes, I wouldn't say killing for money. It's more of, it's more of a business thing. You'll know once you get involved. Um, she's like, Zoe, I don't know if I could kill somebody. So Zoe looked at her like, bitch, I don't know if you can be sitting in this passenger seat right now. So you better make a choice. She know, Zoe go, wait a minute. Before you make that choice, you already sitting here? Just sit back. So Zoe took off and headed to one of the, the buildings that they're supposed to take over. Right? Headed to one of the buildings that they're supposed to take over. And in the midst of her getting there, it's a couple of dudes outside. It's like three dudes outside. And, you know, basically Zoe was scouting out the place. So Leah's looking at him like, Yo, why are you just sitting here? She's like, bitch, I'm trying to concentrate. Shut up. And she's looking, she's looking, and she's looking at the, the, the building. All right. All right. So she goes to Leah. Go flirt with them boys. She's like, bitch, what? Go flirt with them boys. Bitch, you burn me over here just to, to flirt with some fucking boys? I have a plan by why I'm what I'm saying. Go flirt with them boys. She's like, but it's three of them. They're going to think I'm some type of thot. So she clicks the gun and said, bitch, go ahead. Go, go flirt with them boys. She's like, all right, I'm going. So she goes over there. She flirts. She starts to talk to the dude. And whatever. And they on her. You know, all three of them gather around her. Zoe starts to make her way towards the bound, the back of the house, where, where one dude was. She sees the dude, she puts the silence a piece on her gun. The dude don't see her, so he she goes towards the window where he's sitting and pops him right in the back of the door. And poof, poof. He's down. That's one. She sneaks in through the window. As she's sneaking in through the window, she can hear them talking to Lee outside. She can hear them talking to Leah, so they like, yo, you got friends or whatever, whatever. Like, you fine as hell, shorty. Like, you fine as hell. The other one looking at her head. The third dude looking at her butt. Like, damn, she got the fatty, too. She got the fatty, too. So, Leah just, you know, playing along with it. Zoe is making her way through the crib. She's taking each one dude down that she find. Boop, 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 boop. Right. The one dude, she hits. Right, he's coming, he's, he get hit and he managed to escape her. Roll down the steps, gets towards the door. And the dudes turn around, they're like, yo, somebody here. And she ends up shooting him again, poof, poof, poof. Two more times in his back. And the three dudes outside see it, they run inside. But the one dude stayed behind, was like, yo, with Aaliyah and points his gun at her, like, yo, stay right here, don't fucking move, bitch. Better yet, bring your ass inside. Bring your ass inside. So they go inside. And the dudes yell like, yo, we got your bitch right here. Don't make no fucking move. We got your bitch. We got your bitch. I advise you to come downstairs. So Zoe was not playing him no mind. So the one guy go up the stairs and he's looking for Zoe. He's looking around. He's looking around. She takes a can and throws it across the the hallway. The dude hears it start shooting. Poof, poof. He, he fired like three shots poof, poof, to where the can was. Then he runs over there. She comes out the mist, hits him in the legs, poof, poof, drops him, goes up to his head, poof, blow his head off. So they hit a body drop. So another dude run upstairs. He's easy. Once he see the body in the hallway, he's now he's looking. So Aaliyah, she takes a piece of a broken, uh, broken mirror. She puts it in the hallway to see where he at. He's there, he's looking in. So when he's looking in one of the rooms, the second room he attempts to go look into, she comes out and pops him. Boof, boof, boof. 
three times to the ribs and it, actually one of the bullets come out up, up his torso area and he goes flying right back down the steps. So now there's only one dude. There's only one dude and Zoe know it. So Aaliyah's like, it's only one guy left. It's only one guy left. So he like, shut up, bitch. And he smacks her, drops her in, right? So Zoe come down the stairs. She, she's like, I'm coming out with my hands up. I'm coming out with my hands up. He got his gun on, right? So he go, you all right? She go, yeah. So he backs up to where Lee is. And he said, yo, didn't I tell you to shut the fuck up? And he kicks her in the stomach. Toss your gun. So he over towards her gun. And she's looking at Aaliyah like, so Aaliyah looking at her with a hurt stomach. Aaliyah backs out the gun. Right? The dude is not looking. The dude is not paying Leah no mind. Why? Because he kicked her down. Right? Kicked her down. So the dude was like, y'all bitches thought y'all was going to rob this spot. This KJ shit. The fuck is y'all doing? Shots go off. Boof, 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 boof. Right? The dude is like stuck. He's not surprised that Leah, he's shocked that Leah hit him. Boom, 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 three times. She's shook up because she just killed somebody. Right? He's, and then as she goes to the floor, she's shaking because she just killed somebody. So, you know, Zoe's still masked up. Come down the stairs, she reveals her mask. And he goes, I got killed by some bitches. So Zoe goes over the body, puts the gun towards his head. We ain't no bitches. Boom! And puts one more bullet in his head. So she looks at Aaliyah like, you did good, girl. You can stop shaking now. She's like, bitch, I just killed somebody. I just killed somebody. I just killed somebody. All right, calm down. So Zoe see a can of a Pepsi that one of the dudes must have had. She pops open the can of Pepsi and is like, drink this. I got to make a phone call. You'll be all right. She's like, this is what it's like. I said, uh, look, you got money. You need some money? She go, yeah. She takes the money, still shaking and drinking up the soda. Relax. You'll get used to it. Welcome to the team. So she calls Star. She says, Star, your girl passed. And the building is secure. So when she said that, a couple guys came in. They started to sweep the building, clean it up, and move all the guys in and start moving up the, moving up the product pace and started fixing it up. Now, Sting and and uh, Star just finished hitting one building. That leaves one building left, and that's KJ's uh, main building that was left. Uh, we go to KJ now and his team. He's finding out that people have been hitting his last four buildings and been moving into his last four buildings. And he's not understanding where this heat is coming from. Right, he's not understanding where the heat is coming from. So he's surrounded by Rock, JT, and Star. I mean, not Star, Storm, I'm sorry, Storm. He's like, yo, we gotta hit these, we gotta go back and take our shit back, man. Whoever these people is coming in here, they taking our shit. So Rock was like, what you want us to do, KJ? Put your ears to the streets. Find out who's doing what. The moment you find them out, kill these motherfuckers. Kill them. So at, in the midst of that going on, boss calls KJ. I need to talk to you. What's up, pops? I can't really talk right now. Niggas is taking over my fucking buildings and they moving they shit in. He go, I know who's doing it. Who? Your mother. Moms? Nah, no way. Yeah. Your mother's been doing a lot of quiet shit lately. She's trying to take shit from underneath from everybody. Be careful out there, KJ. She got shooters too. So, KJ is shocked by the news. He's shocked. His mother, his own moms would do this? Why the fuck my own mother do this? So now he calling his mother. His mother not picking up. Picks up his gun, trying to go find her. In the midst of all of this going down, Charlie gets a phone call. We go back to Charlie in there. Charlie gets a phone call. It's the detective. And letting him know your dad is getting out of jail. And uh, I just want you to know from me, 
that all charges and everything been dropped. Your father's about to be a free man. So with that news, KJ's face is lit up. He's with Dale. He's with he's with Dale and Sticks. Right? He's with Dale and Sticks. And being that he's with Dale and Sticks, they're like, yo, before the detective hung up, he was like, yo, I need to know about my boy Dale situation. He was like, uh, Dale, right? Um, we still gonna need him in for questioning. Um, unless Spider could switch, tell a different story right now, we still gotta bring him in. All right, so he hangs up the phone. He was like, yo, good news and bad news. So Stick's like, what's the good news? My father's getting out of jail. All right, what's the bad news? Dale, you gotta be, uh, you gotta go in for questioning. That spider story's sticking, man. Unless you, unless they got something else, you might be going down for a temp. It's like, shit. This shit just don't end. So, what, Charlie comes up with a plan. He's like, ain't nobody heard from Mink? Nah. He's been missing for the past two days now. Shit, the fuck is going on? He was, and then Sticks go, yo, y'all heard about that shooting happening at the park? He's like, yeah, I was there. He was like, who was that? That was Boss. Detective Peterson. They coming for us. They coming. As far as I know, Peterson is going down one way or another. He's going down with a bullet or he's going down in the cell. With my father getting out, you know, the war is on for people now. And I'm pretty sure the streets will know. King's coming home. So with that being said, the king coming home, the guys all looked at each other was like, oh, so what's that going to happen for us? I mean, we still can continue business. We getting money. It don't stop nothing. My father coming home, don't stop nothing. Dad was like, I got to get this heat off my back first. That's what we're going to do. That's our next plan. Get that, get them apes off your back. You heard? So they looked at Charlie like, what's the plan? Before we get into that, where's Troy? The fuck you looking for him for? We gonna need him. Sticks, we gonna need him. He was like, all right, wait a minute. Troy got killed, if I'm not mistaken. Oh shit, oh yeah, that, I forgot about that. Damn. Damn. So now what? If if Troy wasn't a fed like you said he was, sticks, the heat's gonna come down ten times more. That'll give us an opportunity to free your name, Dale. Cause we could put that blame on somebody else now. So he was like, What you got in mind? Well first, let's find Poe. Poe may have some answers that we need. So they hit the streets to go find Poe. They come across him and they see him. And Poe is, you know, he's over there extorting niggas. Him and his two bodyguards, they extort niggas. Getting these little drug dealers to come off their bread. And as the midst of them walking up to him, one of the bodyguards stopped him like, yo, what the fuck is up? What's up? We just had to talk. Poe, tell your boys to chill. Chill, y'all, chill, yo. What's up, Charlie? Surprised you ain't dead yet. Me? Dad? What's up? Word it is, your daddy coming home. Yeah, he a free man. He a free man. I just want to let you know. Let him know, you know, we good. We good. I never said we was good. Remember, you tried to get me for some bread when I first came back in town. He was like, come on, Charlie. You can't let that go. Nah, I don't think I can let that go. But I could with a little bit of information. All right, I'm listening. With Spider. That information, I don't know. Well, Pope, you gonna have to come up with something. You gonna have to come up with something. He was like, Charlie, come on. With my dad come on, and a lot of these dudes who was lawyering, they gonna remain. And I'm pretty sure he gonna start taking heads. Don't be the first one on that list, boy. He's like, Charlie, come on, Charlie. 
All right, all right. I may know where he is. What's in it for me? Like you said, we good, right? That's all you could do for me? What else you fuck you want? He said, well, I'm kind of in a slump. It's these new cats running around town. They talking about taking over shit. These new cats? What new cat you talking about? Some new cat from down south. His name is St. Louis. Some new cat named St. Louis. He's like, yeah. Quite frankly, he been on this block a little bit. Moving in, moving in work. You know, a couple people been saying his, his product is good. Oh, that's not going to stick around here. So, basically, he extorted me. Oh, you let a newcomer extort you, Poe? You know better than that. So, Sticks and, po Sticks and Dale looked at him and was like, wow, the bully being bullied. Ain't that some shit? He's like, y'all both can suck my dick. So, Poe basically was like, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. I need to know what Spider is, Poe. Yo beef with the next nigga ain't got shit to do with me. So you either give him up or I give you up. Pick one. So Poe was like, fuck. Dell was like, you got two bodyguards right here. Why the fuck you just gonna run back over there? Six like, yeah. The fuck are they just here? For for show and tell? So they tell him what Spider is. He's like, yo, be careful. Spider ain't the same now. Oh, don't worry. We ain't expecting him to be no different. And they leave. They go find Spider. Spider's right back where he was where he was shot at. With a couple dudes. One of the dudes like, yo, it's Dale. Dale. He got the audacity to come here. Knowing the feds looking for him. That boy got some nerve. So in the midst of him talking, Dale and Sticks come upstairs. Charlie sneaks around back. So as they get upstairs, it's like four guys with, with guns pointed at them. Spider's like, what do I owe to the surprise? He's walking around with a cane in him. Motherfucker, you shot me up. Now, the conversation goes, you shot me up, Dale. What the fuck you doing here? Why you, think, why you ain't in jail right now? So Dale goes, I'm good at hiding out, as you can see. And I found Joe ass. It ain't too smart to come back when you got shot at. So, he look at Dale's like, you better watch your mouth before you get the same treatment I got. And I don't think you're going to survive this one. So, Stick's like, yo, yo, squash or like, we ain't coming here for that, Spider. We came in here to see why you told the feds Dale killed you, shot you, or attempted to murder your shit. Nigga, you know that was all, that was all bullshit. He was like, I did what I had to do. Plus, KJ paid me to do it. So it is what it is. So I lied a little bit. Motherfucker, you left me for dead. What am I supposed to do? Motherfucker, you got me lined up. What the fuck you mean? Listen, I told the feds you, you attempted to take my life when really it was KJ. But now, they still ain't catch you. You still a free man. So we both won, right? Nah, that ain't that don't sit right well with me, man. It don't sit well with me. Hey. What you wanna do? What you wanna do? You in my domain right now. You can either walk out of here with your life, or you could die right here. Cause I do owe you a bullet. So Sticks is like, yo, just take the deal, man. Just take the deal. Like we got what we came here for. We got our answer. Oh, you wanted to know, huh? Hmm. What's stopping me from calling Dale now and telling him you here? What's stopping you? So he looked at Dale and was like, motherfucker, don't play with me. Don't play. But since you say it like that, don't worry. They'll be here soon. So JT showed up. KJ could make it. JT showed up. Charlie seen JT. JT came in and was like, look at it. Del, Deli, Deli, go work, Spider. Go fucking work, right? Now, Spider not knowing that a lot of his crew members, they work for, you know, JT. Go work. 
So he like, yo, you got that paper? Oh yeah, right here it is. And he blows spider head off. Boom! Put a bullet right in his domain. Good for them motherfucker. Did he tell you? Tell me what? Ah, never mind, he didn't tell you. All right, boys. Let's clean this shit up. Charlie jumped out. Start laying shots going boom, 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 boom. Knock a niggas down. Knock a niggas down. Boop, boop. JT got low. Right. He got low. And then they're looking like, motherfucker, it took you long enough. I had to wait for a special end. I had to wait for a special moment. You know, I like to make an interest, baby. Shots is ringing out. Boop, boop, boop. JT is the only one alive in there against Dale, Sticks, and Charlie. So, Charlie told them to split up. Boop, boop. Dale pops up. Come on, come on, JT. It's just me. Put them hands to work. You say you got it? Let's get it on. He like, put them hands to work. You think you bold enough to fight me one-on-one? -on -one? Fuck out of here. He backs out a gun. So Dale like, you right, I ain't. And he backs out his gun and pops him right in the chest. Boof, boof, two times. Drops him. Oh, you motherfuckers. Mm. Charlie, why the fuck is you still alive? Don't worry, your homeboys will be next. Dale puts a bullet in JT's head. Boom. So they end up clearing up Dale's situation. Charlie ended up calling the detective. and was like, listen, I got something for you to hear, and I need you to meet with me. So they meet with the detective, and Dale ends up playing a recording and the video that he had on Spider. He ends up playing the video, and you can hear Spider saying, I lied to the detectives, and it was Charlie. So being that was said, they took the, the warrant off of Dale, and they put it on KJ now. They put it on KJ. KJ got a warrant out for his arrest. That was building into a bigger case. When Detective, jo uh, Detective Johnson was leaving Charlie, Dale, and Sticks, he was approached by the Federals, the Fed agents, the ones that was working with Troy. And they approached him and was like, are you Detective, Detective Johnson? He was like, yeah, who are you? I'm Federal Agent Sims, and this is my partner, Lisa. We was working a KJ case. We kind of find out you put a warrant out for his arrest. I said, yeah, he got an attempt murder, and I got it all on camera. We're going to need you to hold off on that. See, we got a case building against him ourselves. I said, okay, maybe you need to take this up with my lieutenant. Does he know about this? No, but he will hear about it. So, Johnson is looking stuck like, okay. We need your word that you're not going to make no moves on KJ, Detective Johnson. You got my word. Now, can I get in my car? So they watch him leave. He heads back to the station. We go to King now. He's getting out. And we, from King getting out, they show him getting out of jail and going through the process and getting dressed up. He's getting released. And on the attempt of him getting out, one of the Russian dudes tried to kill him. Uh, the, the guard was paid off to let him be free by himself for five minutes. And in that five minutes, the dude tried to kill Ken. He only manages to, you know, cut him twice. One to the ribs, like he sliced him in the ribs, sliced him in the arm, and he tried to reach for his neck. But King ended up defending him off. Defending him off and going into the next part of getting released where the go the door slammed and the dude was like I'll get you I'm gonna, you know I'm gonna get your ass next time he manages to escape death that's the first attempt that they tried to get him he ends up getting out the jail you know what I'm saying and then him and Mr. Getting Out a phone call was made to the organization and the call was he's out he's out so being that he's out of jail now they needed to make a move. So they looked at Miss Indigo and was like, call her in. So when they said call her in, Tony walks in. Mr. Bleak, Mr. Rico, Mr. Jim, and Mrs. Indo was all sitting at the table. And they're having a comp uh, talk with Tony. Now, the talk with Tony was about getting rid of King. Because they felt like King was going to go and expose them or you to come for them. 
So, in the midst of that going on, they put it in Tony's hands to get rid of him. Boss is no longer sitting with us. The streets will get him or the police will get him. So they was planning to throw Boss under the bus. And they was going to put a lot of shit on his name. So they took a lot of power from him and left him in the streets now. With that being said, Boss was either a target for the cops or for the streets. And the organization made it very clear to Tony. It's like, you, we know you wanted part of our organization a long time ago. We've just been brought to our attention. So Tony was like, yeah, I've been wanting to be a part. I felt like I could have been a better member than Boss was. So, and with that being said, um, they noticed that she's been taking over low key under the radar and make it moves. She's made moves enough to take over and find out who the connect was. And she brought the connect with her. She brought Lulu with her to meet the organization. So Lulu also had it out for King because he killed his brother, which he didn't know that was not the truth. Mink is still held up. Um and the area with Caluso was Caluso was basically keeping him out of sight so he don't tell what actually happened and we go to Caluso when, he, when, when this is going down and he's basically keeping Mink under wraps and he's telling his father that Mink has been missing for a couple days he's been missing ever since not a couple days but he's been missing ever since your brother was killed so you're saying your my youngest son is missing and you're not doing nothing to go find him but in the midst of him saying that, he's thinking in his head, he don't know this little motherfucker under the basement. Chained down, hackled. He's downstairs in the basement in one of those um, sealed, no sound rooms. So no matter how much he's he yelling, they can't hear him. Caruso just bring him food and water every now and then. You know what I'm saying? They keep him chained up and keep him locked in because if who so far to find out who actually killed his brother that's his ass so he's keeping him chained up um he basically comes to the organization was like i see you guys need a whole new connect i see you guys want that good stuff and i'm here to just present it and make money plus i want to know who killed my my brother so tony goes we know who killed your brother that's why we're here i'm gonna finish the dude off and let you know that the job is gonna get done. With that being said, when I do this job, you will be distributing to us five in here. And Mr. Bleak was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, us five? We never said you was a member yet. Well, ain't that's why I'm here? To become a member? So they're like looking at each other was like, Miss Indigo steps in was like, I think we should make her a member. She's done so much. Her background speaks for itself. She can hold her own weight. And plus she gets the fucking job done. So I think it'd be good if we roll her in. So Mr. Rico is like, eh, I'm not sure. Mr. Jims is like, prove it to me that you're worth it. Get rid of King and everything that comes with him. You get rid of him, nobody else. Just shoot Tony. We want to hear that his body has dropped and he will no longer be walking. You got my vote. Mr. Lulu was like, yes. And all we had to do was send in somebody who wants to blow himself up for the country. Miss, you do this, I give you my country. You and whatever your companions want. So Tony was like, let's do it. So Mr. Rico looked at him and go, why you got so much? After Tony left and Mr. Rico left, she looked, he, Mr. Rico looks at Ms. Indigo and goes like, why you got so much, so much high standards for this lady? What is it your real goal, Ms. Indigo? Ms. Indigo basically tells him the truth. Like, I feel like we need another woman at the table. Me being here, I'm always out getting ranked. I'm always getting outvoted. It's not fair to me no more. Mr. Bleak was like, I, I can understand. But you know women think with their emotions. 
the missing goes, you know, we just think smart and we know how to get the job done compared to you guys. And you can see she had no emotion on her face. So she leaves the room after saying that. Tony puts out the word, when you, whoever find King, give me a call. It's a bounty to find him and tell me where his location is. So now that they cleared Dale up, JT is down. Rock, Storm, and KJ is only left. Charlie makes an attempt to kill Rock as he sees Rock Dolo. But he missed. So Rock is just firing back. Boof, boof, boof. And in the midst of him get shooting, uh, Tim's cousin, TJ, pops out. He pops out. Because he ends up killing Rock because he ends up going to the hospital to, to, to see that his homeboy Flock was in there. Flock ended up dying due to his injuries. He had a bad infection. He ended up dying in the hospital. Before he died, he told, he told TJ what happened to him and who did it. Now, he pops out. He kills Rock. Rock had Charlie dead to rights. But... TJ popped out, boof, boof, put slugs all in. He put three slugs in his head, dropping his body. And Charlie, right? He helped Charlie off the floor. He's like, yo, good looking out, helping out my boy. Oh, you, you flock man. He's like, yeah. How's he doing? He died in the hospital. His injuries is, is too far, too far gone. He died from infections, you know, whatever. He said, I'm sorry, man. It's all cool. It's all cool. Where's this nigga KJ? He next on my list. Hey, get in line, bro. He's mine, bro. He's mine. Mm -hmm. All right, you got KJ. Give me Jake. So, TJ goes to where Jake is hiding out. Well, Jake is laying low, but he's been laying low. Uh, Jake has turned into a fiend. He's been doing, you know, crackhead shit because killing his homeboy put him in a state of mind. And then they, they, they basically used him to kill Tim and then they bitched him afterwards. They turned him into a bitch. He became a crackhead and he's just been lost in the streets. Tim finds him. He's not knowing who Tim and Jake not knowing who TJ not knowing not TJ, Jake not knowing who TJ is, he thought he was a regular drug dealer. So TJ walks up to him and was like, you Jake? He's like, yeah, you got something for me? Yeah, a message from Tim and blows his head off. Boom, completely. Puts a bullet in his head. That's for Tim, motherfucker. Kills him. Right? So now we go to Storm. Where she's going to meet, where she's with Mo, and Mo is heading back to, to Tony because she has to meet up with Tony. And Storm goes with her. So Tony is basically putting the word out that Charlie's dad is getting out. I don't want him. If any of y'all find out where his location is, you let me know. Understand? So she sees Storm and she was like, Storm, what are you doing here? Um, to be honest with you, Tony, I want to join your team. She said, ain't you working with KJ? It seemed like shit is falling apart out there. I just heard JT and Rock got killed. I don't want to be next right now. Well, no. She said, I don't want to be next. And if, if that's Charlie's doing out there, he's coming for a vengeance. She said, don't worry about Charlie. He'll get taken care of. But if you want to sit at the winner's table, please. You got to put in the work, sweetie. She like, Tony, you know what I can do. You know what I'm about. But I need to know you loyal to me, though. I need to know you're loyal to me. She like, understood. Understood. So now, Tony is planning on killing Boss. And she's either going to bring KJ aboard or get rid of him. So 
she sets up a meeting with boss. She sets up a meeting with boss. And boss is like furiated with her because the way she's been moving and the way shit been going down. She was like, you know, King getting out and all this shit happening. How you gonna do the shit behind my back? This and then, this and then the third. She was like, boss, you don't deserve that position where you at. I just came to tell you what it is. It's a new queen. It's a new queen in town. Her name is Tony. You either ride with this shit or get rolled on. Make a choice. So, Storm was at the meeting. It was Tony and Storm. And boss knew Storm. And basically, he was like, after Tony said what she said, he looked at Storm, gun this bitch in. So she backs out the gun. Tony stops in her tracks. Storm turns the gun on boss. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And she pops him three times. Poof, 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 poof in the chest. You heard what the lady said. It's a new queen in town. And puts another one in him. Poof. He turns over. Closes his eyes. Tony walks up to her, taps on her shoulder. Welcome to the team. Let's get the fuck out of here. They leave boss. Boss is crawling back. He's actually alive. Like 10 minutes after they left him, he's crawling back to his car. And he's on his way to the hospital. He manages to get himself there. And they manage to save his life. So now, now that he's still alive, he has to lay low. Now we go to Tony where she meets up with KJ. KJ's like, Mom, like, what the fuck? Like, my shit though, like, your father did you wrong when he left you in charge. He shouldn't have did that. Things would could have been better. But KJ, I'm giving you an opportunity here to ride with your mother. A real one. All your homeboys is dead. So is your father. My father's dead. Boss is gone. Who did him? Charlie. Charlie killed him. So she lied and told him Charlie killed him. Kill that motherfucker. You can make an even, even spade if you do one job for me. You'll be on my team. Trust me. If you do this, Charlie will come looking for you. So he goes, Mom, what I gotta do? Charlie, Charlie, Dale, and Sticks is on the way to meet, the, meet his father. You know, he get to, he's on his way there. He sees him. He's been waiting for him. Pulls up on him. They hug. They had you finally home. This and that, the third. This and that, the third. He introduces him to Sticks because he, he already knew Dale and everything. And, you know, the guys basically go out to eat for drinks. You know, they're having a good time and everything. They, Things has calmed down. In the midst of them going on, somebody spots King and they're saying he's with Charlie right now. He's with Charlie, Dale, and Sticks. So they spot him. Right? Tony and KJ go out driving. They go off of the drive and whatever, whatever. And they spot them coming out the restaurant. So she's like, wait, a, before KJ can get out, she goes, wait a minute, let's see where they go. Charlie drives, drops sticks off, then drops Dell off. Dell got a new crib and he's living comfortable. Sticks got his own crib, he's living comfortable. Charlie goes back to the crib, his old crib where his aunt is. And the aunt is like surprised that King is out because she wasn't expecting. Charlie haven't been home in a couple days. He's basically been, you know, Victoria's crib and basically running around in the streets. You know, he also been keeping himself clean every now and then. You know what I'm saying? He keeps himself clean with his, at his boy's crib. But, you know, his auntie April thought something had happened to him already. So him showing up at the crib and her seeing Charlie and King, it's like, she was like, what the fuck is going on? Da -da -da -da. So he tells his sister, you got to get up out of here. That's my crib, man. But she's like, you gave me the crib. No, you got to get the fuck up out of here. Pack your shit and get up out of here. She's like, I ain't got nowhere to go, bro. Please don't do me like this. 
I said, you did my you did my son like that, your nephew. You put him out in the street. He left one his own. Nah, auntie, you put me in the street. She's like, come on, bro. I ain't got nowhere to go. Please don't do me like this. Please don't do me like this. I've been keeping the bills together. I said, look at my crib. It's a fucking mess in here. She's like, I clean it up, please. Just don't put me out. So he ends up not putting his sister out. And whatever. A doorbell rings. She gets the door. It's Tony and KJ. KJ shoots April in her chest. Boom, boom. Killing her. Charlie and King instantly, like, caught wind of the hurt shots. And Tony walks in. Welcome home, King. Welcome home. Welcome home. Right. So, KJ goes, Charlie, how the fuck you killed my father? How could you put a gun to his head? What the fuck are you talking about? I ain't kill your father. I ain't kill your father. Not knowing. Boss is still alive. Right? I ain't kill your father. What the fuck are you talking about? They told me. You did it. You put four bullets in his ass. I said, I, ain't, I wasn't with him. I wasn't even there, bro. Why would I kill your father? You killed my mother, motherfucker. That makes us even. So before King could say something, Tony steps in and was like, uh-uh, King. Let's let the boys handle this shit out themselves. As she has a gun on him, but King maneuvers her, smacks her down, kicks her in the face, and he puts the gun at KJ. I need you to drop your gun, son. So KJ like, fuck you mean, son? I need you to drop it. Now you gotta know the truth before this shit get any worse. He said, what you mean? KJ, I'm your father. I'm your real father. Boss is not your dad. So Charlie is like, the fuck you say? I'm your real father. Your mother knows. I am your father. Boss ain't your, ain't your dad. So shots go off in the crib. Boof, boof. Tony shooting. Right? She's shooting, boof, boof. And she's shooting in the direction where King, Charlie, and, and KJ is. She misses she misses King and ends up hitting KJ in the ribs. Boom. And before she could finish shooting again, King grabs him up out the way. And he's hit. His mother shot him. And attempted to kill him. Right? So he goes, Mom, you hit me. So she goes, shut up. Get the fuck up. Is that true? And he's really my dad. So, in the midst of that, they tussling with the gun. Uh, Cause King jumped back out on on Tony. Boof. Tussling with the gun. Right, tussling with the gun. The shot flicks off and hits Charlie in the arm, in the chest. Boom. He goes down. He goes down. Right. And King is furious. He ends up smacking the shit out. Like, he over, he overpowers Tony with his man strength and throws her down. Punches her in her face a few times. Knocks her the fuck out. Boof. She comes to within two minutes. Within the two minutes coming to, KJ shoots King. Boof, boof, boof. She, he shoots him six times. Boof, 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 boof. Killing him. Killing him. He fades out, blacks out. Tony wakes up to King dead. She leaves the house with KJ still inside and with Charlie still inside. The ambulance arrived because the neighbors heard shooting. She leaves. She calls the organization. It's done. King's dead. She also takes a picture of it and sends it to them. And they put the picture on a the, on the projector. They see that his bullet, his body wounds took a lot of bullets. The ambulance come. Detective Johnson arrives on the scene and he finds KJ there and Charlie there. He, the EMT comes and they check both of them. They're both still alive. We end the chapter there.